Hello everyone and welcome. This is a short and simple video tutorial to illustrate how to use command line parameters in Java. Well, the first question we should ask ourselves is, what exactly is a command line parameter? Okay, well a command line parameter, which is also known as a command line argument, both terms can be used interchangeably, a command line argument or a command line parameter. Basically, it's the parameter that's passed to the program from the command line. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's have a look. I have a simple program here called command line parameters demo. It consists of a main method, and within the main method, there's simply one statement that prints out the first parameter. I'll explain this in a moment how it works. So, going to my command line terminal, so inside the folder C colon backslash temp, I've just got one program, which is a program we've looked at up above here. So I'm now going to compile that program, first and foremost. So, um, let me invoke the compiler. Java C, perfect. Actually, we don't need the .exe. And then the program itself. So I hit enter, it prints or displays no messages, which means it compiles correctly. So now I simply want to run the program. Now, you know what, let me explain exactly what is going on here. <clears throat> when we invoke Java what we're, from the command line terminal, what we're actually doing is invoking the Java virtual machine. And we're passing to it our Java program, otherwise known as our class, which is a command line parameters demo. So when the Java virtual machine receives a Java program or Java class, it automatically looks for a method called main within that class. So, and we do have a method called main, and it invokes that method. So what it will do is it will simply invoke all the statements within this method, so within the open and curly brace of the methods. Okay, so we have simply one line and a system.out.print. The first parameter is arg0. Okay, so what's happening here? What's arg0? Well, as you can see, our main method receives a parameters consisting of a string array which we call args. So it's an array of strings. So arg0, this is just like a normal array, the zero element of the array refers to the first element in the args array. So I'm gonna run this command, this program, and I'm gonna pass in a parameter from the command line. So this is my command line parameter from inside the command terminal that I'm gonna to pass to the program. So I'm going to run this now and as you can see, it successfully ran and it printed out the first parameter is Martin. So, arg0 refers to the first parameter passed to this program. Now, as it happens, I only pass one parameter to this program. So, what if I pass two? Well, let's have a look. I'm going to simply cut and paste this statement. And instead of saying arg0, I'm going to say arg1. Okay. So, I now need to save this program. I then need to compile it and now I'm going to run it. But this time I'm going to pass in two parameters. The first parameter being Martin and the second one being John. Let's run this. And as you can see, it printed out the first parameter is Martin. So arg0 refers to the first parameter. arg1 referred to the second parameter, John. Okay? So, and you can guess arg2 refers to the third parameter. arg3 refers to the fourth parameter and so on. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing I want to show you is, what if I have the statement but I don't pass any parameter? What will happen? Well, let's have a look. So I've just saved the program. I now need to compile it again and run it. But this time, I'm not, well, first of all, I'll show you that it does work passing in one parameter. There you go. Now I'm gonna pass in no parameters. What do you think will happen? Think about it for a moment. You can pause the video. I'm gonna continue on, okay? So I'll run it there now. And as you can see, it prints out exception in thread main. Java.lang.array index out of bounds exception zero. At command line parameters main and line four. Okay, so this line four first. Okay, this is actually a perfect error message because it says an array index out of bounds exception. And that's exactly what is happening. Recall, it's trying to process the args array which is an array of strings. It's trying to read the first element in that array. But the problem is, there are no elements in that array. We've passed no parameters to the program. Hence, it gives us this error. So the first thing, you, the first lesson I suppose you can take from this is, never attempt to process command line arguments until you first verify 
that there are command line parameters. And that's the next thing I'm going to show you. So in order to determine if a program has received any command line parameters, we simply check the length of this array, the array args, which will contain any command line parameters if parameters have been received. So let's do it right now. So if args dot length, oops, I type it here. If args dot length, this is how we check the length of an array, is equal to zero. We can simply, for example, print out a message system dot out dot print line. No parameter, no command line parameters received. And it'd be no harm if we put a, an else statement there. Let's tab in. It's important to indent our program so it's clearly legible. Okay, I think that looks fine there. Sorry, my mouse, I've lost it there. Okay, so I'm going to save that now. We're going to compile and run it. So, oops, compile the program first. It compiled without errors, and now we're going to run it. First, I'm going to run it with no command line parameters. And as you can see, it prints out successfully, no command line parameters received. Next, I'm going to run it, passing in one parameter, Martin. And the first parameter received is Martin. If I run it with two parameters, well, it only process the first. So I suppose that leads me on to the next thing I want to show you is, if we wish to display or process all of the command line parameters received, how do we do that? In particular, we obviously need to know how many parameters have been, have been received. For example, if we've received only one parameter, we only want to process one parameter. If we receive two or three parameters, we then want to process two or three parameters. Do you follow? So we look at that now. To display all of the parameters received, the command line arguments, we simply iterate through the array of arguments and print them out one at a time. So I've already written the code, so I'm gonna just cut and paste it in here. And let's have a look. So system.print, the parameters received are, so we're now going to display them, and we have a simple for loop that for i equals zero, i less than args.length i plus plus. So we're simply going to iterate one at a time through each argument in the args array that contains all the command line parameters, and we print them out. So we simply refer to start off with i equals zero, which is the first argument, then i is incremented to one, which is the second argument, then i is incremented to two, which is the third argument, and so on, until we get to the length of args, in fact, one less. Recall the index of an array starts at zero and not at one. So the first element starts at zero and not at one. So let's have a look at that now. We'll compile it and we'll run it. So compile it and now run. So with no parameters, it says no parameters received. Pass in one parameter, Martin, it prints it out. Pass in two parameters, John, it prints out Martin and John. Pass in three parameters, Mary, it prints out Martin, John and Mary, and so on. So there, you now know how to determine if a program has received any command line parameters, and if it has, how to process those parameters. Basically, you refer to this arg zero. Okay. The final part of this video covers an important area that many beginners struggle with, and that is, if you wish to receive a command line parameter that is not a string value, how do you process it? So a very simple example is we want to receive an integer as a command line parameter and let's say increment it by one and print out the result. So let me show you. In fact, let me show you how to do it wrongly, <laughs> how to do it wrong, okay? How to do it incorrectly, okay? So say for example, I want to print out the first, a parameter the first parameter incremented by one. So I could say system that the print line, the first parameter is arg zero plus one. Okay? Now I'm hoping you will see straight away that this won't work because arg zero is a string and this is an integer. So this should not compile. So let me demonstrate. Let me just clear the screen so it won't be crowded. Okay, let me compile the program first. And it should it compile successfully. Now let's run it. I said it shouldn't work. Let's have a look. I'm going to pass in number one 
and the parameter is 1, 1. Haha, <laughs> very good. Even better. So it actually did work. What had happened was, and in fact this is the rule of Java, this is interesting, a string that is concatenated with a literal value, and this is a literal value, when this is passed as a parameter to the system without that print line method, it converts each of the values to a string, and then the plus operator is the concatenator operator for strings. Hence it prints out 1, 1 and not 2 as we we're expecting. So do you see that? That's very interesting. So I said it wouldn't compile but I forgot it wouldn't have compiled if I had done the following. Say for example int result is equal to arg0 plus 1 semicolon and then I print out result here. Okay, so let me save and compile that. Incompatible types. String cannot be converted to int, which is exactly what I was saying. Okay, this is a string, this is an int, and we wish to store the result in an int. This is an incompatible type. So that's the first point I was saying. But I forgot uh, that when you pass in to the print line method parameters, all of the parameters, whether they're a string, an int, a double, a float, all of the parameters are converted to a string and then it is processed. And in this case then the plus is considered a, as the concatenation operator and not the additional operator. So let's put it back to the way we had it there. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to show you that when we wish to process the argument as an integer, the default method will default way of processing command line arguments don't work. So how do we solve it? Well, the answer is actually it's not that difficult. Let me show you. Um, I'm going to cut and paste the solution uh, from another document that I've opened. So int result, sorry, <laughs> excuse me, I must put that before it. Int result is equal to, and this is the answer, sorry, let me get rid of that. We need to call integer.parseInt. And the, what this method does is, it's a class method associated with the integer class. It simply takes in a parameter, a string parameter, and it converts it to an integer. So the result of this operation here is an integer plus and this literal value. So this plus operator is now an int is now the addition operator as opposed to the concatenation operator because we have two integers on either side of the operator. Again, technically, to use a proper language, these are called operands. So the operands on either side of the operator are both integers. Hence, according to the rule of Java, it will produce an integer result, which is exactly what we want. So if I now say print out result, all going well, it should, if I pass in the number one, it should print out the first parameter is two. The first parameter, maybe I should write plus one is two. <laughs> so, okay, let me save this and let me compile. Do you know what? Let me uh, clear the screen because it's getting quite crowded. Java C command line parameter. Perfect, no error messages. So let's run it. So I'm going to pass in one as a command line parameter and I wish this to be processed as an integer and not as a string and then to be incremented by one and the result printed out. And there you go. The first parameter plus one is two. So this is important. If ever you want to treat the parameter that you pass into your program as anything other than a string, well then you have to call the appropriate method to convert it to the type you want. So in our case, we wish to treat the string as an integer, so I have to call the integer.parseInt method to convert the string to an integer, and only then could I process it as an integer and do what I want to do. Okay. So I hope that's given you a good overview of command line parameters. We've basically gone through and explained what exactly is a command line parameter, how to determine how many command line parameters are passed to the program, and then when we've determined that, how to display and identify and process each individual parameter, and lastly, how to read in a non-string parameter, such as an integer. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please. Uh, 
put any comments, uh, give me any feedback you like on the YouTube channel. I really appreciate it and I can answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much.